How's it going everybody? My cup of tea here, back on the reaction video, and it's finally time to continue watching some more Warhammer videos. Yay, yay. Now I read through all the comments on the last Warhammer video you guys really liked. Um, I couldn't respond to all of them, but I did read them, and I learned a lot, especially about the Inquisitors and their Innocence Proof Nothing model, which makes a lot of sense now that I read these comments. So I didn't know that people could be like mind controlled by demons without their knowledge. Like. It could be like years later down the road, it could be like, oh, do this, random person. So the Innocence Proof Nothing model makes a lot of sense now that I read that. <laughs> but yeah, no, today we're here with part two of the Every Single Warhammer 40k Faction Explained by Bricky. And at this time, I think Bricky's gonna be talking about the non-human factions, like the Chaos Demons factions and some other factions, maybe the Orcs. I am interested to see why humanity is, I think, having a losing battle right now, because I think Bricky said that like we're currently like in a losing state during this war. Um, I'm, I wanna know why, like what does, what do they have? What does this other faction have that we don't have? Cause man, if we pack and we got the Space Marine Legions over here, we got, we got the, uh, the Battles of Sisters or Sisters of Battle with the Organ Pipe tanks. Come on now. We got, we got the Omnisire. Crazy Omnisire. Oh, we have that. Come on now. We, we should be fine. We should be set for life. Come on. Any Inquisitors? Come on. What, what, what do the demons have that we don't have? <laughs> We're gonna find out. So hopefully you got some snacks. I got me my juice right here, and I got me my honey bun that I'm gonna eat, hopefully, in this video, hopefully. <laughs> and yeah, no further delay, let's start this, because it's gonna be a long video. Hey all, this all right, is part all right. two in a two-part series on the Warhammer mm -hmm, races. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen part one yet, we do the Imperium of Man. You can check that out in the description, you saw and that, yep. you watch that to get context for this episode. If you already have, Go ahead and Imperial um, Man. It was a good uh, so video after an right there. Episode All right. Nothing but humans. We can now talk about chaos. Chaos which involves humans again. Oh wait, okay. A little bit well, less. We also got demons. And demons. I just someone grab my ass. What? Like hard neck. Oh, okay. So as I've mentioned many times before, we've discussed the warp, the yes, immaterium, yes. the hellish landscape, the purgatory dimension realm between the material realm of our existence. Mm -hmm. Now in the warp, it's terrifying, horrible. There are demons everywhere. Yeah, no, I don't want to go there. Crazy. All your minds and thoughts and emotions get projected there. It is both form and empty it is vast and tiny yeah. it um, obeys it's, the laws it's a of lot. time it's and just... physics while simultaneously does absolutely nothing of the sort <laughs> what? It's a hodgepodge and a culmination of just unknowable eldritch horrifying shit and mm. there are four gods okay yep the four gods yep in chaos and the warp these are the four major chaos gods mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if we wish to learn about chaos we need to learn about each and every single one of these chaos let's go gods. through the chaos first gods. up we have corn it's corn it's corn not cane i guess i think someone told me in the comments but it's corn yes corn that's the guy that's my favorite one that i remember from the top 10 strongest uh, Warhammer characters because I heard how crazy this corn person is. I just remember he shut like the ambitions and like personality out as one uh, person that I think portrayed him. Corn did. I'm like, oh shoot, nah, you're different. You're different if you can do that. Every single one of these chaos gods. First Blood up, for the bloody you have God. Corn, and he is the easiest. Corn is your classic Satan. Yeah. He is all about Look anger, at that. murder, fighting, blood, guts, death. You ever heard the term? Blood for the blood god, yep. skulls for the skull. I remember seeing that in the comments That's too, yeah. The whole idea is that he is all about the fury and strength of battle. He doesn't care where blood comes from. I just want to so see long it. As blood is flowing. He wants to fight and murder and carnage and slaughter and death, 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 death. <laughs> that is corn. Very simple to understand. Very Next simple, very simple. Zeech, it is Zeech. Zeech is yes. the god of change. However, I think I said a different name last video permeates in so many different other ways. He's the most eldritch of all the demon gods. Yeah, I can, I can see it, yeah. He has this weird way to always be plucking at the strings of the universe. He's always conniving and scheming, uh, yeah, so, yeah. And doing his best always planning to cause something. as much little bullshit as he can. Zeech is, is unknowable. Everything that makes sense, he will and won't do. Every future and setting and every type of, of destiny or Fate mm -hmm. is all foretold and also changeable. It is set in stone while also completely random. He knows where everything is going to happen and also that none of it's going to happen. You would ask oh, a question. Said, uh, said, that you want, question oh. leads to three more questions. And those oh, no. questions <laughs> lead to the heat death of the universe, which asks four answers to those questions. What? And then he thinks to himself, what are questions even really? <laughs> and are you even asking the questions? Or are you simply giving paths to answers and, and other horseshit? 
Zeech, I just want to answer. <laughs> Zeech, yes or no? <laughs> Give me a definitive answer, Zeech. <laughs> Stop playing with my mind. Zeech is just me. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck with stuff. He is yes, and he is no. He is the understanding, and he is complexity. I, I, I get it. He is unknowable. Kind of. I get it. He's and that's just what the god of change is about. Very bizarre. And he likes birds a lot. He likes birds. Hey, birds why. are cool. Next up, we got Papa Nurgle. It was Nurgle. Papa Nurgle. Yes. He loves you for who you are. Probably not. He will murder you. No, he does not. Same. But Papa Nurgle is about rot. Pestilence, disgusting. Death and death. Disgusting. He is the end of everything. Him and Zeech do not like each other very much because where Zeech represents change and adjustment, Nurgle represents stagnation and death. He is all about miasma and pestilence and large bloat and pus and, and organs and people just He's, being sedentary. He is the reason for the Dark Souls he horrible the uh, areas and poison areas. And decay and die. Nothing <laughs> is certain. He's the reason. It's all Nurgle's fault. Death. Yeah. All of us will end up the same way and broken down through just yeah. sheer never ending decomposition. So the joke that Nurgle always loves you is generally because of that. Because I we sure all end up the same. We all rot and we all die and wither. I mean, that's Nurgle. And he's got. He's not wrong, but it's just. Nah. And, and disgusting. He's disgusting. Kinds of diseases and sickness and things of that nature. That's generally Nurgle. He's pretty easy to understand as well. Yeah. He's, he, he chunk. Finally, we <laughs> have the youngest of the chaos. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a sense of that. Planesh, also known as the Prince of Pleasure, Prince of Pleasure. Or the God of Unspeakable Excess. Slanesh is generally referred to with sex, but it's not only sex, it's just that's a good avenue if you want to make stuff. Slanesh is just the idea of the senses of the body being cranked to not just 11, but more like 17. Oh, so dear God. Slanesh okay. a little bit more when we talk about the Eldar because they done fucked up. Oh, but the Eldar is in this? Okay. He, Video? It's, or whatever. Is what is, mainly is that, about is that still the excess okay. of emotions, and therefore sex is generally a large part of it. However, it's mostly pain. Uh, that, no, no, that is definitely lots pain. Lots of pain, torture, but sometimes sexually related or drug related. Uh, lots of drugs. Oh, no. oh, uh, lots, lots, lots of drugs. So oh, okay. that gets well. off on everything: extremes in happiness, extremes in sadness, extremes in pain and sadism and masochism, and of course that goes along with the sex part of it as well. She's it's an extreme. It's an extreme of the thing. Color scheme, very purple. Lots of exposed genitalia. A lot of their models have like exposed nipples and stuff. And that is generally the theme you go for from a physical side, but it really embodies everything, mainly pain and also the, the excessive amounts of mm. emotion. So when okay. it comes down to it, you'll find a lot of them have things like spikes or whips or any kind of BDSM style gear because it's gotcha. unspeakable gotcha. excess, the prince of pleasure, everything in excess to the point where it is just sheer frightening. That is Slanesh in a that's, nutshell. That's, a little bit bizarre and a scary. little hard to describe sometimes. But as we talk more about the Dark Eldar layer in this video, you'll understand it far, far better. Oh, and God. Far more what did, what did they do? They might be thinking, why would anyone ever want to join chaos they all look horrifying screwed up yes why would you i mean corn i understand corn well corn's a unit that of course one your mind is put into the warp and the materium so you can be easily swayed by chaos demons when they get into your head especially mm. if you're a psycho sometimes regiments of the less mentally strong people whether they be civilians or say low-level guardsmen or conscripts yeah. can be easily swayed by this and become chaos cultists and stuff mm. and they serve their dark gods or whatever mm. god they personally refer However, and this might seem strange, chaos in their own right isn't necessarily evil. Huh? See, the warp is every manifestation of emotion and being, every uh, soul, everything of existence. Even this like the positive the emotions. Yeah. All the different chaos gods have another side to their coin. Corn mm, might what? be death, murder, slaughter, slaughter, but he's also got this weird sense of survival of the fittest. Oh yeah, okay, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And honor. Corn will never lie to you. Oh, Corn will no, never okay. stab you in the back. Okay. Corn isn't about conniving and scheming. Corn is about straight up mono e mono, you versus me, get in the ring. We're gonna murder each other hard right now. Corn's, a, I mean, Corn sounds like a well, not, he's not a good guy, but Corn's like uh, you know, a somewhat. He's not somewhat good guy. Corn's, Corn's okay. Corn's okay. <laughs> He's okay in my book. It may not be a good thing at the end of the day. I still wouldn't believe him because I got my on the side. I believe him. Him and Zeech generally don't get along because of course Zeech doesn't get along with schemer, but he's also about the idea of hope, 
Where there is change, there is change for your predicament. There is change for your problem. The hope of the galaxy, the ability to bend the world to your will, the idea that your fate is not set in stone, but in reality that you control your own destiny and can control it whenever you want. The changer of ways, that is Zeech. And but, of course, Zeech and Nurgle hate each other because while Nurgle, Nurgle does represent stagnation, death, and decay, he also represents finality. An ending. The fact uh, that you like, can be you, you will die. You're gonna knowing that you will end and how you will end. Fear mm, of the unknown, okay. fear of change is not present with Nurgle. With Nurgle, everything will rot and die, and that provides that finality, that ability that this is. But what does over. Celeste have? We are all. The What's same, her positive? It's and positive. We all end the same. We know the meaning of life. The meaning of life is to live and die and rot. And with that, it brings peace of mind. Slanesh is a lot more simple. While they are oh, the excess of me, emotion, yes. they are also the representation of emotion. Slanesh embodies happiness. Slanesh er? embodies excitement and joy and pleasure. Where? Not only in the I mean, I understand the pleasure part, but where's the joy and excitement? Bam! Style <laughs> Bam. and pleasure, but also everything else like food and drink oh. and a air on your cheek and sunlight the and feeling you slanesh feeling. really all of that is also represented with slanesh huh. so you have to ask why are they always represented as super evil skulls and spikes on everything yeah that want to murder everybody i don't really got an answer for you on that <laughs> okay one. my assumption is that because mentally humans may think worse thoughts even if we don't act on them and therefore they're projected in the warp more that one's a little bit weird i don't know this is me spitballing right now but okay okay i don't know I you, mean... need a, you need a super bad guy you already got the imperium of man you need somebody to be a little <laughs> bit worse than them so you got demons honestly you who said cares? you got I demons buy like a bird magician look at him so cool so combining all if anyone together, knows why let me know down below in the comments demons are their eyes if you want base. to they run in go really hard you have lots of summoning and conjuring tons of spells generally a little bit frail but they have special saves to make them a little bit stronger you've got giant demons and smaller demons you got hordes <laughs> of little boys and tons of big guys demons are as they seem demons nurgle yeah, demons. is slow uh corn is super scary in melee you've got right, yep. who are far more into psychers and spell casting mm, yep, who is all basically. melee really 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 fast but yeah, squishy fast, but with lots of hordes of fast canyons of yeah yeah and pain damage of course so overall the demons are a huge part of 40k and a massive threat to almost every single faction with a, the exception of a couple However, the what's, big what's part the of the demons is also transferred into the other nine Primarchs we didn't talk about, uh, which are the Chaos Space Marines. The Chaos Space Marines. I did not know about the... Oh, the SpongeBob. The horse <laughs> and all of his boys, all of them and the Primarchs, oh, they the traitors. all also become Chaos Boys, and they all have their own special Chaos Legions, specializing in so many different things, just like the Adeptus mm, Astartes, the Angels of Death, okay. the regular Space Marines. Gotcha. Chaos Space Marines aren't a whole lot different than the regular Space Marines. They have the same armor, you know, the same training and toughness. They just specialize in different kinds of things. And also, a lot of the Primarchs have ascended into greater de- Is it greater demons? They're demon Primarchs at this point. Demon Primarchs? Gigantic, horrifying man-demon oh, hybrids alrighty. that are pretty awesome, if I'm going to be honest. They look really, really cool. It's but nice then, and their associated legions that they are a part of are all kind of going out there and causing a large ruckus for everyone else. Considering the raw strength and firepower of a legion of space marines, imagine mm. that entire legion just converting the just chaos be and fighting you. It's generally pretty horrifying. There's a lot of them, so I gotta write them down. But All you've right. got the Emperor's Children. What is that? Primarch Fulgrim, loyal to Slanesh. These people, they are some messed up. People. I'm looking up the They're person's face right now. Nemesis? Tons of drugs, is that tons you? Of torture. And I think Fulgrim is a demon Primarch right now. And oh god, I am terrified to see what that man looks like. At least mm. on the tabletop, because emperor's children are not good people <laughs> you've got the iron warriors which are kind of like opposite of the imperial fists with primarch perturabo i believe is his name they're okay. chaos undivided they just kind of serve chaos in a general aspect just general chaos gotcha more. but the iron warriors are big on the siege and fortification and they're basically Defensive. entirely yeah, yeah. against the imperial fists and a major rival perturabo mm. i believe is also still alive and i'm also very interested to see what he looks like because Demon Primarchs are badass. You've got the Night Lords with Primarch Conrad Kurz. Conrad Kurz is dead. 
which oh. is good because he's a sick fuck. What, but what the Night he, Lords are I don't want to know what he did. I'm good. Terrorizing people and terrorism. They're generally about fear and mm. probably so. You've got the World Eaters with Primarch Angron still alive. Look at all the heads. See. Angron. If you think you've known an angry person, Angron is the angriest son of a bitch you will ever know. <laughs> Angron How angry is he? Parts of his brain that didn't make him angry, so he oh. could be angrier. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> you win that. Okay, you got it. I'm like, how angry can you be? Because I know a person named Hulk. No, nah, you got it. You got it. You know what? This doesn't make me feel angry. This doesn't make me feel angry either. Got it. He's pure rage. Understand. You got it, my boy. You got it. You win. Brain that didn't make him angry, so he could be angrier. Angron. Fuckers mad. You've got the Death you Guard got and it, buddy. Mortarian. They actually have their own special codex and their own major army on the tabletop. Mortarian himself is actually one of the models. And and look at him. Look at him. It's so I mean, cool looking. So far, all these Nurgle demon farmers look nice. So very slow. Oh, very base. You've got the word bearers with Primarch Lorgar. Lorgar is, I believe, still alive. I don't know what's up with him at the current moment. But the word bearers are generally the people who caused all the major problems in the beginning. At mm. least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with oh, Primarch. I did that. Uh, blew up that one planet with the, the uh, pylons. You've got what? the Alpha Sorry, Legion, the Black over. Legion, all the major problems in the beginning. At least I blame them for it. They're little assholes. You got the Black Legion with Primarch Horus. Get fucked, nerd. You got the Alpha <laughs> Legion with Primarch Alpharius Omegon. Chaos, I think. And then finally, you've got the Thousand Sons with Primarch Magnus the Nerd. Uh, the Thousand Magnus Sons the also nerd. have their own book, just like the Death Guard. Magnus is also a tabletop model. Yeah, definitely is these. Super cool. Definitely is these. Uh, and they're all follower. super heavily psyker and kind of Egyptian themed. They look pretty neat. But overall, with all of Hello, these Chaos Space just in factions, case. you can play as a lot, of, a lot of different ones, but the main ones that you can really work at are standard Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, as well as the Death Guard and Thousand Suns, as they are the most fleshed out, especially on the tabletop, at least. Thousand See, Suns, this okay. right here, oh. this is a really good about way the to quotes. describe the Chaos Space Marines. What the thick-headed fools with their broken corpse of an emperor fail to understand is that not only can they never defeat us, but they cannot hide or flee or shield themselves from the triumph of chaos. They are mm. finite and we are unbound, undivided. They must not err or they shall fall to heresy. All who fall join our cause. Every imperial fool who dares to open his eyes is a willing recruit. Mm, they strive dang. merely to hold back our fury and might, and it consumes them. Thus, you can see chaos is inevitable. We lurk not only beyond their grasp and at their gates, we lurk within the darkness of their souls, on oh, the tip of their gosh, tongues, that's... in their tortured dreams. We are them, but freed from the shackles of ignorance. We are them, grown strong, mm. evolved. We are them, but so much more. As hard okay. as that All right, that's is, not to that. The but saddest Jesus. part is they're mostly right. Chaos is yeah, basically Yeah, chaos unfair. is everywhere. You could probably get rid of Space Marines a decent amount, the Chaos Space Marines, that is. But every soul that dies goes to the warp. Yeah. Every Chaos soul will end up back in the warp. And depending on how hard you killed them, they will come back at some point. Um, Every demon you banish will return at some point. Chaos is unstoppable. You can, yeah, you the can't stop chaos then. Okay, and so... Well, maybe there is at some point some way to stop them somehow. The resources to do so, the requirements to do so, are so far beyond the reaches of man and the other races at the current moment that really it's just an unstoppable force that just keeps on coming and it's just, just barely being slowed chaos is by far the biggest threat an they infinite army number their legions are everywhere and yeah they're pretty scary so i promise we're done with humans now let's talk about some okay xenos, xenos the El oh they're eldars okay so let's talk about the <laughs> <laughs> Why the Uzi song? Eldar, or also known as the Eldari, which are a super hyper specialized and very technological. I know a little bit about them, yeah. Of, well, elf people. They were as well responsible for the creation of Slanesh, the yeah, Eastern yeah. god. 99% so of them that, got erased. Debauchery on a world ending scale. 
Two back in the day, it was just corn Z. Well, and this guy, you said. The Eldar are very, very ancient. Millions of years. Mm -hmm. These Eldar, however, have a bit of a sensory problem. You know, every kind of pain or feeling that you have is a little bit amplified compared to the normal. However, with Eldar, as their race advanced so excessively and they became so re self-reliant and everything became so easy, there was no requirement for food production anymore. Mm -hmm. There was no shortages. Mm -hmm. Everything was basically done. Everyone was so comfortable. And that comfort breeded this weird sedation. And that sedation breeded the requirement for more and more debauchery. Yeah, I know that they used to like be like when they um I forgot who they fought against. It was I forgot, I forgot. It was when the old gods made the Eldars and the Orcs to fight against Oh, I forgot the people they were fighting against. The the factions, not the factions, the group. Basically after the Eldars won, they was like, you know what, let's let's get into art, you know, poetry, all that, etc. 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 But then as he's about to say, it gets worse. I don't know how worse it got, but it got worse apparently to create Slanesh. So let's see why how worse it got. <laughs> Breeded the requirement for more and more debauchery. Debauchery! <laughs> debauchery! <laughs> When everything you have can be so easily acquired, you will end up down this road of pure debauchery. All of the senses the Eldar had that were so powerful, things like feeling, happiness, sadness, mm -hmm. and just evil and good, all needed to be satisfied and satiated. And the desire to satiate these senses grew more and more with worse and worse debauchery. Oh, it started off with things like sex and drugs becoming so much more rampant because of these are the first things you generally turn to when requirements for living are so easily accessible. Mm -hmm. It would get to the point that made Sander Cohen in Bioshock look sane. I haven't played the game uh, yet. This is the kind of debauchery it led to. That sounds bad though. constantly satisfying and satiating these sexual and sadistic or masochistic mm. fantasies that only elevated and elevated and this was species wide people mm. started going down darker more depraved and more violent paths as time went on however some people didn't entirely take to that okay some of okay. the Eldar were positives. looking at this depraved species that they had become and said i no thanks for me dog i'm good and they bailed oh they, they just left craft world Eldar. Uh, craft they okay. left on these giant continent-sized starships okay. craft called Craft worlds. They believed in okay. learning the old ways of the Eldar and pushing away from this depravity and debauchery and going back to their main roots. And so they would segment themselves on these giant craft worlds far that looks out of nice. They even had this thing called the Webway. Remember what we mentioned about warp travel with the Imperium? Yes. Well, the Eldar had something way safer called a Webway. And the Eldar Webway is actually like a pocket dimension Ooh. kind of thing. And in that pocket dimension, there were also more horrible, depraved oh, oh no. groups and clans oh no. that would spend their time in there. And if you imagine the debauchery was bad already, these were debauchery X10. What the heck? So all of this continued, and it continued, and it bloated until Slanesh mm. just burst forth. All that emotion, all that mental... Well, How bad it had to be to create a whole chaos god? This is such a condensed space. Don't forget, this is all being shot, all their souls as well, into the warp. Oh, into the all warp. All this depravity, right into the warp. Okay. So, what happened? Boom. Sonesh was birthed and killed off 90%. Yeah, oh, 90%? I thought it was 99%. My fault. Untold trillions. Trillions, trillions is a huge number ripped from their bodies and their actual fleshy bodies devoured by slanesh demons Dear the gosh. entirety of the eldar race was eaten alive and their souls consumed and, and the they caused it pleasure. and they caused All it is crazy got fucked up <laughs> it was so bad that it literally ripped a warp hole into the fabric of the materium called the eye of terror yeah That's yeah this, like, quasi horrifying gateway portal from the materium and the immaterium right next to cadia <laughs> what is cadia it, <laughs> it must be so something this sad that happened also known as she who thirsts by the elder slaughtered the entire population except for a couple 
those in the craft worlds were actually not affected by this as they were so far in the reaches of the galaxy. Nice, that nice. That crazy crack that birth of Sonesh only affected the ones in the center. So these craft world Eldar were able to escape, but Sonesh got their sights on them. Oh. Every time an Eldar will die, their soul doesn't just pass into the warp naturally. It goes straight to Slanesh. Oh. Craft world. Oh, gosh. Not. What about those people in the webway? Well, imagine that giant birth happening, but they were only able to just barely get a grasp onto you. Slanesh was just barely able to hold <laughs> on. These people are the Dark Eldar, or also known as the Drukhari. The Eldar the population Drukhari. right now okay. is so massively small it is minuscule compared to any of the other pop well most of the other population it makes sense the yeah the eldar are consistently having issues trying to get their population up because as their souls are constantly being hungered by from sonesh they realize their entire species is doomed and they understand it very well so i'm guessing even if you like try to like you know Increase your population, so then that still can like take your soul if you like die or something. Even if like you know you born somebody new or born a new, if you born like a new baby or something, that baby can't get its soul taken when it grows up by Sinesh because you're still an Eldar, I think. But all right, it's time for a quote. Since the time of the fall, our race has been haunted by what we, in our reckless pursuit of hedonistic indulgence, gave birth to. Though mm -hmm. our dreams mm -hmm. once yep, yep. overturned worlds and quenched suns, we are now but fitful shadows clinging to the edge of existence. All the stars in the sky cannot blot out the hateful glare of the red moon's eye. Mm. The birthing place of the great enemy pulses with all the malice of a demon that is dreaming, casting its shadow over all we have ever done and all we ever shall. Every twisted strand of fate and casting of the runes leads me to this time, to this place, and it is clear that the final battle awaits me at the ancient crone worlds. A conflict the likes of which has not been seen since the Monkai warred amongst themselves and their corpse of a seer fell to his traitorous son. Is coming. I don't know what that All my is. steps lead towards it, no matter that I walk other paths. I see the stars stain red with the blood of the Monkai, and though their wars do not concern me, I would gladly let them destroy one another. I know that mm. to avoid this fight is to condemn my race to inevitable doom, and mm -hmm. though all I see is darkness, I know that I will not flinch from my destiny. And now let's talk about cute plastic models. Bro, I'm hmm? straight up. Oh, okay, we're going to keep. Time. After all that, we're going First straight here. The playable race we have for the Eldar are the Craft World Eldar and living in those Craft World starships I mentioned earlier. And each of them have their own kind of Craft World, almost like a Space Marine. I like how they look. Craft World is it in itself its own special kind of group. And the Eldar themselves are very fast and rely a lot on trickery. They are squishy, okay. a bit weak, but they're very in tune as psychers. Tons of psychers across the entire Eldar population, and their weaponry and abilities are fast and extremely hard hitting, but of course, rather fragile. Understanding an Eldar's brain is an exercise in futility. But they're they like an actual glass cannon the squad. In confusion and trickery on a whole galactic scale. They fight weird, they think weirder, and Eldar, in their own right, really rely on this to keep their species alive. They need to think right, about do what you gotta do to survive, yeah. Strangeness yep. of what they do if they truly want to not be immediately murdered and slaughtered wholesale thanks to their entirely small population. Mm -hmm. However, I must say that it seems like their population is getting slightly better. These okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Millions upon millions of people. It doesn't look like it. All right. Continually, you know, reproduce and have their craft worlds expand. Losing a few people in battle, while hurts a lot, they aren't really losing what's extremely precious to them. It's not like every single death means the death of their species. It's like they're kind of on the upturn a little bit. Oh, so it's not it's still a doom what race I thought it was. Into Slanesh every time Never mind. Dies. I take it back. But I was right. <laughs> they're definitely doing a little bit better than they were before. Eldar are fast, cunning, and what they don't make up for in tankiness, they make up for in extremely advanced weaponry. They also call humans okay, Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Oh, um, that's what Monkai. I was like, what is a Monkai? I don't know. Okay. Wait, why does that sound like a monkey? <laughs> Wait a minute. Extremely advanced weaponry. They also call humans Monkai, which is something I mentioned earlier. Um, that is a derogatory slur for humans in the world. Sounds like it. World. Sounds um, like it. Why is it called Monkai? 
Well, it's because you can't, in your game, call people monkeys. Oh, okay. Well, well there you go. I was right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it makes sense, yeah. On the tabletop, exactly what I said. <laughs> Not very tanky. All right, Monkai, bad, <laughs> derogatory like word for humans. Gotcha. And Mach 5. Fast, hit hard, die fast. Exactly how it sounds. They've been good for a very long time, too. We bring only death and leave only carry on. It is a message even a human can understand. Why are you uh, hurting them? Why, why, what what we so, do to you? Drukari. Let's talk about the Dark Eldar. Oh, today's episode. Oh. Drukari. Oh, fucked up. He's fucked up. That's fucked up. So, those <laughs> people I mentioned oh, in the Webway, in the super deranged cults. Yeah. The depraved people of in, the Eldar. In the Webway, yeah. In the Webway, they didn't quite get a hold onto them. Slanesh, so like, has them, but it has them on, like, by the pinky finger. Mm -hmm. And they're slowly being consumed by Slanesh, but they found out they can stave her off by doing Slanesh things. The Dark Eldar Earth? are by far the worst, most horrifying, disgusting, depraved, and brutal huh? race in all of Warhammer 4. All of them? All of the races? They're, they're the worst? The Dark Eldar? The Dark Heart? This one? How? I mean, he's gonna tell me, but what? I'm trying to even figure out, like, what could they have done to be considered the worst race ever in Warhammer 40k? Shoot, now I'm scared to hit play. <laughs> 40k. These are entirely a group of people whose full purpose to save their species from extinction, to go into planets, raid them, and take as many slaves as they oh. possibly can to torture them oh. for one, five, ten, twenty, a million years. Whoa! Because that torture will keep them from dying. They look very BDSM style too. They definitely Yo. have a lot of spiky bits and they have a lot more Whoa, of that kind okay. of leathery black look to them. 20 but million years of straight say, torture? Let's say you are an upstanding imperial citizen. Uh, yep, Living citizen. life on a regular planet. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you. That's, that's what it was. They were fighting against the Necrons, the uh, Eldars and the Orcs, I believe. Yes, that's what they were called. Yes. Okay, Living sorry. Living life on a regular planet. Yep. You get invaded by the Necrons. The Necrons will shoot you with a de-atomizer and you will be destroyed in a millisecond and that's it. Okay. Not the worst way to go. Not the worst way to go. Uh, you are invaded Painless, by maybe. Chaos Marines or something. You take a bolter shot to the head or a the chain gun. sword across your stomach and you get cut in half. Painful, it's gonna hurt, but yeah. Not the worst. Uh, the orcs arrive. They beat you to death. Mm -hmm. Hurts, but you know, whatever. Tyranids, they eat you alive. It's pretty rough. That is rough. The Dark Eldar. What do they do? The Dark Eldar. Uh, this is going to get a little graphic. I oh, God. You I pray you die. You don't. You are oh. instead taken as a human slave. Your life will be endless work and agony 24-7. They will make sure you can't not die as your pain satisfies them. They will hook you up to all manner of torture devices. They will inject pain-based like stimuli drugs directly into your nervous system they will slowly run razor blades across your skin uh, they will fillet you uh, and pull out your teeth uh, and your nails uh, one by one they will like i don't like this anymore and your skin and wait for it to grow back so they can do it again they will murder and torture and use the r word it rhymes with grape your entire family in front of you and do the exact same what thing the them. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have gone crazy. Now we've gone crazy. Okay. All right. Yo. Whoa. Whoa. All right. All right. I see why oh, they're the worst now. Uh, I had something I wanted to say and it's gone now. Okay. All right. I'm like, they're not going to go. They're not going to take it. Of course, I should have known. I should, I should have known. It should have been the first thing I thought of when they see when he said they're the worst group ever. I should have known what was gonna happen, but it it was worse than what I thought. And then, oh my god, I don't want to go back. Something's gonna hit play. You yourself will also be rhymes with grape anywhere and everywhere what possible, the? and this will occur for twenty years until 20 you are years? no longer satisfying to them. And then you will be contorted, crushed, and twisted into some form of trophy, a fleshy trophy. You get turned into a trophy? Or a couch, or a TV A couch? Stand, what the Or perhaps a wonderful hat, while you are, of course, still alive and breathing. 
and you will become I'm, I'm still a alive? fleshy trophy for eternity. What the fuck? And that is what happens when you are taken by the Dark Eldar. They are the most depraved, most horrifying race in all of 40k. Is that worse than what goes out in hell? I don't... Jesus, that's, that's like hell. That's like extra hell. That's Heffel right there. Whoa. Okay. All right. do it so they all don't die. They are nah, really I need them to die. Die, please. So Nesha's grip will get harder and they will have their souls pulled away. So long as they keep doing this, so Nesha's like, you're doing good, man. You're doing solid. You keep, you keep that shit up, you elk ear bastards. That's that's the that's the Dark Eldar. That's the Drakari. They are horrible. On the tabletop, Shoot they me. are actually kind Shoot of like Eldar, me now. But more extreme. They are even squishier than the Eldar, but they hit generally even harder. Fast attacks, skirmishers, really quick. Is he talking about the toy, like, the tabletop damage, stuff? I don't care about this anymore. I don't care about <laughs> what they do in the tabletop now. In a dictionary, you'll find a picture of the Dark Eldar and Sev from Public Commando. A quote. From, oh no, uh, they have quotes too. Uh, we are the lords of despair, masters of terror. Yeah, you Red are. And agony are our meat and wine. That's that's they wild. Plentiful indeed. They need to be wiped out. Dark Eldar. Dark Some Eldar. Of the Harlequins. Clowns. Okay, clowns. Okay, that's fine. Harlequins, guys. Hey, Harlequins. Let's go. Let's switch up. Jesus, that was, that was bad. That was bad. I still. They're like a weird. I'm sorry, Fossil. I'm still stuck on what happened in the, when he's talking about the Dark Eldars. I, dear God, that was horrible. It got, it just got worse. The more he kept talking, the more worse it, it got. Or more worse, it got. The worse it got. I can't even speak right anymore. Okay. They're God, dang, demonic that was bad. clown performers. They're like a weird mix of Sander Cohen uh -huh. from Bioshock and Jin from League of Legends, but in a more clown theme. They're they're artists of death and perfectors of their craft. They do not belong to craft worlds or any of the weird Drukhari people. They guard something called the Black Library, okay. which is this giant tome of never Sorry, still knowledge, thinking about what happened in earlier. in the heart of the Eldar webway, and also guarded by their god named Kegarok, I believe is how you pronounce Ah, it. I think I remember he that is one. the laughing god, but yeah. it's the Eldar the laughing god? And these are the characters. Harlequins, the Harlequin clowns. These are Eldar clowns. The razors, I'm still okay? stuck on the razors so and pulling fingernails. So imagine the things that an Eldar ah. okay these depraved individuals would find funny and this is the god of that what it's it's a horror clown oh my these god. are gods of horror for us normal people for them they're like oh, Archie. oh it's Not so Archie. funny they're all dying that, horribly that clown movie the terrorizer oh, 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 they're very bizarre and difficult to describe uh they've escaped the ruinous powers of Slash somehow How? but their main thing is guarding that black library and the harlequins just they're demon clown performers. Okay, there are barely I thought... any models on the tabletop. They're good in melee. They're they're demon clowns. Demon I, clowns. I'm not sure. I, I got a quote. Oh, it is please, too easy yay. for an Eldar to embrace the obscene virtues of chaos. For Slanesh is nothing more than a manifestation of the Eldar mind in its most wild and unconstrained form. Human morality is meaningless to the Eldar. And to the dark side of the Eldar mind, all life is to be expended at a whim. Cruelty and generosity are but the impulse of a moment. Beauty and sensuality are virtues that can be expressed in bloodshed just as easily as in song. Mm -hmm. To an unfettered Eldar mind, there is neither sanity nor madness, but merely a wave of perfect existence fulfilled by its own savage momentum. They're very strange. The Harlequins, yes. Drukhari, yes. Eldar, yes, they, are. they are an anomaly that make humans seem completely easy to understand in comparison that's crazy they range from rekindling their civilization to horrifying murder and also clowns, clowns and also clowns. In place but honestly they represent quite well and are rather interesting especially with the whole sonesh murdering everyone bit so yeah eldar dear god now, that was a horrible bugs all right bugs you know i'm happy to talk about bugs now here we go it can't get worse so the bugs here it is it can't get worse so i'm here for this now all right. fun, yes please do yeah this crazy eldar shenanigans yes please no more eldar talk for a while they're bugs they look like zerg hell yeah they look like zerg you want to know why i look like zerg because they were actually supposed to uh be what Zerg were. Now I don't know what the Zerg Starcraft is. Starcraft was supposed to be a 40k game in the beginning. Oh, Starcraft? That's why they look so oh. much like Eldar, Zerg, and the Imperium of Man. Like, 
kind of space marine those marines huh they look a little bit space marine uh... maybe i don't know you really fucked up on that one games workshop Tyranids <laughs> are a giant infestation of un was that the high no these are giant extremely bio advanced hive mind organisms oh, that are yes. basically all about so. absorbing as much biomass as they possibly can to oh, evolve. Oh, I remember reading this in the comments about the hive and powerful or and kill and eat anything in their path. They are probably the least evil faction. That's crazy to say. That's crazy. All they want to do is eat shit. They want to om nom nom the entire galaxy. They hangry and we food. Also, we... this Tyranid hive Survival the has a presence in the warp. In fact, Tyranids in their own right have a massive presence in the warp. They have a thing called the shadow in the warp specifically. Shadow? Where when they are coming in to invade a planet, they have this weird ability to kind of cut off the warp on all the psychers on that planet oh. and how do you get help across the stars well you need the warp because you mm -hmm. need that for interstellar travel so with people unable to call for help from the tyranids these are just easy pickings and an entire giant tyranid high fleet comes out uh, of orbit and just will massacre absorbing all that biomass and turning them and all of their other Tyranids into even more advanced monsters. They come mm. in so many varieties too, all in based on what is important. Tiny little ripper swarms for s scouting and having little dudes eat people up to the Hormagons, Termagons, and Gene Stealers, all the way Gene to stealers. the Hive Guard and the Exocrines and the Swarm Lord to Hive Tyrants and their giant battle fleets and even something as gonna have your giant battle like fleets. The Hierophant Bio the what? The what? The Tyranids come in that all cool. forms and sizes depending on what they require. They are extremely good at anti-biological weaponry. There is no way you can plague them or blight them. They have Makes extremely yeah. strong armor, carapaces and such. They sound really strong. Tyranids are, are not Nigh perfect organism. Yeah, they sound are like pretty spooky hard to when beat. it comes down to how they handle all of their genetic material. Keep feeding them, they'll keep evolving. They keep on creating new horrifying organisms to spread across the galaxy. And you know what the most terrifying part of the oh, Tyranids is. is? We might be surrounded. There have been oh. like around six or seven Tyranid hive fleets. Yeah, I think they're like the largest. Kronos, all these different kinds of hive uh, fleets, species. They've all arrived in the galaxy from different wasn't six hearing. or seven Tyranid hive fleets. Behemoth, okay. Kronos, all these different kinds of hive fleets. And they've all arrived in the galaxy from different points. Different sections of the Milky Way galaxy have had different Tyranids come through. And that is horrifying that is because as far as we know we could just be surrounded on all sides and we wouldn't even tyranids. know the only reason you may not hear a whole lot about tyranids is because it's a little bit hard to have a bunch of story off of one hive mind genocidal monsters all these giant bugs swarming in killing and eating everybody and evolving well, i mean as cool as there are some cool characters the swarm lord old one eye you mm. can't really have a whole bunch of major character based stories yeah. around them as awesome as they are, they're simple. You kill them they bugs. want to eat you. They want to eat you. No story from Tyranaz. They are simple bugs. They don't you talk. Want to a more I complex? think. Talk gene stealer cults. I can Let's have all the pie I want. Okay. I get around faster than walking. And wherever I need a seat, I can just sit on my balls. <laughs> Randy Mars, baby. Are a special brand of Tyranid that can slowly infect themselves into different kinds of society. And Her? by infecting them, they can rise up to where they all pray and believe in these real, like, regular humans pray and believe into their tyranid hive mind gods oh. and these brood lords and i think they're called patriarchs all can turn an entire world all based into gene stealers and these are called gene stealer cults an entire mm. hive world of the imperium can be turned into nothing but servants of the tyranid masters oh, so like the, the smart them ones of the group of the hive group genetic code a little bit uh. they also have this cool like mad max look which is really neat. They are definitely one of the bigger threats to the Imperium besides Chaos. I, I keep saying biggest threat to the Imperium. They're up there, though, because mm -hmm. you, Dingus, stepped on a bug in middle school. <laughs> Asshole. I'm sorry. There is a cancer eating at the Imperium. With each decade, it advances deeper, leaving drained, dead worlds in its wake. 
This horror, this abomination, has thought and purpose that functions on an unimaginable galactic scale. And all we can do is to try to stop the swarms of bioengineer monsters nice. that unleashes upon us by instinct. We have given the horror a name to salvage our fears. We call it the Tyranid Race. But if it is aware of us, it must know us as nothing but prey. Yeah. Y'all need to, cool. all the other fans need to work together but to I mean, fight cool the tier. Orcs. Oh, never mind. It's the orcs. Who cares? It's the orcs, baby. Orcs, 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 orcs. I fucking love orcs. I, so, I can tell. <laughs> the, the green monsters, the green tide, the green skin. It's time for some fun. These orcs, they are in fact a race in 40k. The orcs are as exactly what you expect them. They have archaic weapons. They're big boys. They have axes and they have yeah, big just... old teeth. And they want to let me turn it up. And there are so many of them. A lot. The only reason they haven't taken over in the entire galaxy is they can't, can't stop murdering each other. <laughs> orcs always, are so cool. They're always orcs fighting. Don't have best each other. Orcs don't have existential crisis. What matters is who's the biggest orc. Loud. You listen to that guy. Who's the biggest he's the orc? Biggest orc. He big orc, big orc knows best. Of you course. You the power of imagination. Of all the <laughs> <ways> <laughs> battled, he went straight to a crow. He went straight to the crow. He's like, not, nah, not nah, quote that. Of all the races I have battled throughout the galaxy, the orc is the hardest to comprehend. They wage war with machines that should not work, care little for strategic gains, and are just as likely to slaughter each other as the enemy. They like, hey, machine, work. Defies all, right. all logic. You, you as don't. An orc, you're, you just, you're you just... enjoying life. You're enjoying the life you're given. Your whole life and job and purpose is to get up and beat each other to death because you can. The biggest orc is the man who understands everything. He is the boss. And orcs have this really weird, like, big, dumb, stereotype British accent, <laughs> which is just hilarious to me. Those are orcs. You're, you fight. You like I mean, that sounds like the most simplest to fight. You wage uh, war race to be you in. You want to wage war. You got your boss over there, and you better listen to the boss, because if you don't listen to the boss, the boss will squish you and make <laughs> you an example for the other orcs. And then you can't fight, because orc dead. And orc dead is... Orc dead can't fight. I think an orc got to worry about being mind controlled, because orc is simple brain. They together machines out of parts that don't make any sense and because they, <laughs> they, they have sense. the mental imagination that that machine will run it'll run if that machine is out of <laughs> gas you're driving that machine with your fellow orcs and Don't the tell biggest me. orc is behind the wheel and you run out of gas some orc behind you like oh oh zog we're out of gas and the big orc is like no we're not no, we're i right. filled the fucking gas tank <laughs> just, just and all go. the other orcs are like oh yeah I, you did do that and then you turn the the fucking mech back on and it works again <laughs> the Amish side be like, what the hell is this? How is that working? I don't think they believe in the Amish side. I think they just believe in... I don't know what they believe in. Orcs are just orcs. They just... Whatever imagination, like he said. Imagination is a strong tool. <laughs> gas is empty. No, it's not. I put gas in here. Turn it back up. There we go. I knew I was right. I love the orcs now. Alright, you make me old... He make me a orc lover. Does it have gas? Make me a lover of the Probably orcs. Probably not, but it works through the power of imagination. They paint things red because it makes them think that it goes faster. <laughs> they paint things purple because it's the sneakiest color. You want to mm. know why? You ever seen a purple orc? Didn't fucking think so. <laughs> orcs think so. are also like ancient as hell. They're back in the yeah. Eldari time frame. Yeah. But that, back then they were called Quirks and they were much larger and scarier and far more intelligent. That's right. And now they're yeah, just orcs and they're big, dumb, and they smack things. But they're pretty spooky. They're not very well armored, but they hit really hard. Of course. And it's called the Green Tide because there are so Oh, many that's cool. Orcs. You call it the there Green are Tide. As orcs as there are tyrannids. A wave of orcs coming at Who knows? But they keep on, you know, murdering each other. So it's not uh, too bad of an yeah. issue. Orcs are entirely comic relief. Their stuff Great, I need, I need, it. I need some comedy in here no in this sense. depressing universe. They don't work the way they're supposed to, but they work because they think it works, because they imagine that it works. 
orcs care only about who is the biggest orc and they will follow the biggest orc and then if they want to be the biggest orc they'll challenge the biggest orc and then when they go and they issue a wa a wa is just war in oh. orcs they <laughs> wow. everybody and everything in this giant hide of green orcs who are just excited to be hitting something they don't care that they're hitting Eldar or the Imperium or Tau or anyone in between. They're just so they get to pull Corn would up. love the orcs. Corn would love the orcs. And on the tabletop, they are a total coin flip and they're really fun. I have never met a salty orc player. <laughs> I have never met someone who plays orcs and is ever just a bad guy or that guy. Orc players have this kind of fun to them because when you play them, you are completely submitting yourself to rng so <laughs> uh, guardsmen imperial okay. guardsmen when they shoot they roll a dice and on a four up they'll hit their target they have a 50 percent chance space marines pretty good they hit on a three or higher because they're well trained uh, then yeah, the custodians sense. they That's hit probably on like a two yeah they're super well trained orcs they hit on a five or higher but if they roll <laughs> a six they get to make another shot <laughs> with anything Anything? From the dinkiest pistol to the biggest rocket launcher. It doesn't matter. Listen, Half that, of their stuff that sounds great. Up on a whim. One of their medics, if you roll a one to heal someone, you fuck up your surgery and you just kill an orc. <laughs> They're so wacky and silly. But the thing is, is if you roll well, you roll high, and you keep rolling high, Listen, you are going to You gotta be the master of luck with, when you play the orcs. You, you lose. Eh? I mean, that's what get, you get when you play orcs. That's what happens when you play orc. It's a coin flip. You should never go to it. Be oh. a salty bitch when you play orc. Yeah, you can't be. You should know. Things won't go your way. It's just the roll of the dice. You're playing a dice game. But if you're gonna have fun and you want to be stupid and you want to be silly, you, you're gonna play some damn orcs. But on the opposite side of the fun part of this, oh, is this the Necrons? Yeah, Necrons. Are they coming back? The Necrons are I know they sealed themselves in the tomb for like millions yeah. of years. They have a much more fleshed out lore than before. Back for in the day, of they years. were just undead Egyptian space terminators, and they still look that way, but now they actually have a story. So way back in the day, you had the Necron tier. Kind of see a theme here: Eldari, Eldar, Cork, Orc, Necron, yeah. Necron tier. So the Necron tier were this race of generally kind of shitty people. Not because they were personally shitty, because their lives were off. Yeah. They were ill-fated to a horrible existence a son. of like radiation and a terrible planet they lived on. And everything just really sucked. Being a Necron tier was just really depressing. Mm -hmm. They really were looking for immortality. They were extremely reliant on the hope that they would eventually find the key to living forever and to stave off this horrible nature that they were thrust upon them. And therefore, they could become the most dominant race in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And they found this group. They're called the Old Ones. Imagine them old kind one, of like old uh, gods. Forerunners Stupid in me. Halo or the Zelnaga in StarCraft, right? Okay. These Old Ones were these sp strong, oh, mm -hmm. pretty much omnipotent beings. And they, of course, knew the key to immortality. So the Necrons went to them and said, please, show us your ways. And the Old Ones said, piss off. <laughs> not really. They were a lot more humble about it. But they did not want to share their secret of immortality. And so they the went to war with them. The Necrons, of course, took this very well. Catan, that's the other ones. And waged war with them. Kind of under this united banner. The Necron different dynasties didn't really like each other. But under this one man, the Silent King, he Ooh. thought the best way to unite his race was to do this giant war with the Old Ones out of spite for them keeping the secret of immortality to them. This was known as the War in Heaven. War in Heaven, this yeah, is I remember a that. Multi stage war. Because during this War in Heaven, they discovered the Star Gods, a whole new race of people known as the Catan. Yep. The Catan. These Star Gods were also it's very Catan. much like yeah. old ones, almost omnipotent beings. And they too had the key to immortality. And so the Necrons went to them and said, Hey, can you help us fight off the old ones? Can you help us kill these old ones, you, the Catan? And the Catan mm -hmm. said, yes. And in fact, we can help provide you with the immortality. immortality. So desperately. But it's different with so what the they thought it would be. the king of the Necrons decided to make a pact with the Catan to allow them to accept this generous gift of immortality upon them. But this, of course, had been a horrendous trap. And the mm -hmm. Necrons were dragged in chains 
to this biotransference where their flesh was stripped from them, yep. replaced with nothing but a metal hollow shell as their souls were ripped from their body mm. and fed to the Catan. And the Catan fattened up. They got chonk on the <laughs> souls of the Necrons. Got as this chunk. was their plan all along, they consumed the flesh and souls of the Necron tier and turn them all into unwilling robotic slaves just to serve their will. Yeah, I and remember then, all this. With their new founded Necron army, they pointed their guns at the old ones and the Catan continued their domination of the stars and their genocide, complete and full genocide of these old ones. The old ones did their best to stave it off. They even created other races, mm -hmm. the Eldari and the Orcs, to try to fight off the horrifying Necron army and the Catan above them. But there was absolutely no possible chance for them. And the old ones were absolutely oh. across the galaxy. I thought when they created the new species, the old ones created the uh, Catan, not the Catans, the Eldars and the Orcs. I thought that would like stop them from like i thought that, that saved them i didn't know they were still like being decimated it didn't help them at all so i think when the necrons finally turned on the old the uh, katans that's when they're like all right well by that time the old ones were extinct so it doesn't matter okay my Their fault entire race completely removed full-on hundred percent genocide however Dang. during all this the katan so just infatuated with their victory started fighting each other for fun for sport. Oh, they fought each other small oh, differences okay. doesn't matter the katan with these over overpowered people they're going to eventually hit each other at some point <laughs> and as they began just menially fighting each other the eldari and the orcs actually started pushing on the katan's borders a okay. little bit yeah okay bit then they started to come back money. okay and as this continued this is when the silent king who retained his consciousness decided to leap into action ah. and scale revolt he did the sign king ah. and this revolt was bloody as the entire necron army was surged off to destroy these star gods they okay were that's to, how this just happened after suffering okay horrendous losses were able to turn the tide of the war and they took these katam and they blasted them because as these star gods are unkillable, they were able to break them into thousands of shards mm -hmm. and entrap them in giant stasis vaults to now actually be slaves to the Necrons. That's and crazy. The Necrons they turn the tires on them. The entirety of their old gods enslaved to them, they realized that soon their race was about to be attacked by the overcoming new races, the Eldari and the Quarks. And mm -hmm. so what they did is Quarks. they retreated into now, giant Quark back then. stasis tombs in order to preserve their energy and their strength. Right. So when one day they would be reawakened and they would be able to rule the galaxy that was rightfully theirs. And then some dingus Adeptus Mechanicus <laughs> guy. Oh no, not my boy the Adeptus Mechanicus. The back and they see all these oh, we, primitive my, races my boys calls it? Lawns, and they think get no. off of it. So the Necrons are back, super advanced, and they are here to reclaim the galaxy that they so rightfully believe is. I didn't know the, my boys so calls it, my Adeptus Mechanicus. Like Tons of undead Egyptian skeleton robots that when they die, they just get right back up because they keep on reanimating. Hard to kill, tons of crazy stuff. You can use the Catan themselves as units to fight with. Pretty cool. The Necrons are the one of the three major events in 40k. The Horus Heresy, the mm -hmm. Fall of the Eldar, and the Awakening of the Necrons are all pretty oh, okay. special events. And the Necrons themselves are pretty pretty dang cool as well. Here's a good quote from a cool time. on a war game. Lucky creatures, as long last you have found the tranquility of death. I was like you once, clinging to life and blind mm -hmm. to the truth. Mm -hmm. When I uncovered the truth, I too shuddered and pale with fear. Deep in these catacombs, I was remade. Here, my brethren slumbered for eons while the living grew like weed. Mm. My lord, ooh, this oh, 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 that was nice. While the living grew like weed, ooh, now I gotta, I gotta get this weed off my lawn. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, plans for eons while the living grew like weed. My lord knew this day would come. He had plans for us all. We would purge this world once more. So come, poor victims of life. We will mm. grant you tranquility in these crypts. Kronos will be a tomb world. Oh, that's that's a powerful quote right there. I like that. They're also pretty smug. Trays in the infinite, especially. Cool. Cool. Yoga. But speaking of dickheads, 
Huh? Last race. Last. Oh, we already on the last race. We made a fucking walkie. <laughs> exactly. I remember to tell. I don't think so. Not entirely understood. However, a long, long time ago, many thousands of years ago, uh, in the 40k world, that is, some oh, imperial this, this navigation guy. vessels were <laughs> going around through different areas, and they saw a primitive race, blue people smacking each other with sticks and stones. They thought, yeah, okay, dumb Xenos race who gives a shit, and they bailed. Then this giant warp storm occurred right in that major area, unable to be breached. Then, once that warp storm, six thousand years later, subsided. Hello, those little sticks. Well, they decided to actually have no war of any kind and all just unite together under one flag of the Tau Empire. Oh. And now they have gigantic stars. How did this happen? What, what, a, what a glow up. And, rail <laughs> and, mechs, and they are here to ruin your day for the greater good. That the is generally greater the Tau good. Empire. Uh, they have this kind of feeling of this homogenous group. All species can go underneath the banner of the greater good. The greater good mm. is their idea of the fundamental increase and help of all. In fact, they are most likely the most like the covenant in Halo, oh. where they have the overarching prophets being the ethereals who are actually kind of dicks and, and like to pull oh. strings a little bit. Uh, okay. But then you have all these different races directly underneath them and they all work together in this big group as this large foreboding. Okay, race different species work together under there. one flag, like you said. Okay. Religious influence across the galaxy. The alien is not intrinsically evil. Do not hate him. Pity him, his ignorance. Seek to understand his differences and equate him with his inadequacies. Only then will he accept his place in the greater good. Hmm. That is generally the Tao. And if you're kind of wondering, like, what their mainly big shtick is, well, they're yeah. all about big robots and mechs. They have oh, laser okay. rifles Gundam. and rail guns. And they got playing giant here. mechs with tons of missile pods and heavy rail rifles and rail guns and burst cannons and ion accelerators Ooh. and void shields and all this stuff. And that is generally what the Tau's all about. But you're probably thinking, Bricky, this doesn't sound that evil. Yeah. This doesn't sound very grim, are dark, they, are they evil? And you'd be right. The Tau Empire really don't have that much of a horrifying, grim, dark style like everybody else. They're much more younger, new age thing. In fact, they're probably a lot less evil and a lot even better than they are now back in the day because they liked having like that good guy faction. But a lot of us who really like the, the dark, depressing style of Warhammer, we don't like it that much. Y'all crazy people. Y'all don't want to have any any fun here. Y'all want dark and depressing stuff in one hammer. No hope. Extinguish the hope. So, see, the Tau get a lot of hate. And a lot of that hate isn't necessarily unjustified. It's mainly from a tabletop perspective. But okay. as you can see from all the visuals I've shown you recently, they don't really fit in the form. I mean, yeah, that's true. Very well. I understand, they yeah. They lack that super dark, dramatic... Like, you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong universe, has, Tau. Get out of here. weird kind of like drungy stuff that chaos or say the orcs do and the necrons and the eldar have their own specific style as well the tau really do look like something out of gundam and while it isn't necessarily a bad thing it does definitely not fit too well yeah. there's that there's also <laughs> the tabletop problem uh, in tabletop tau on tabletop are horrible at melee combat but exceptionally good at ranged combat hmm. so they blast everyone from really really far away and they have a million rules to make it so that it's nearly impossible for you to get into melee. That combat. sounds lame. So it basically just forces you to bottleneck the game into one specific gameplay style, which is gun to gun. And if you're doing gun to gun, they're <laughs> going to win God, every time the captions. because they're the Tau. And the Tau are yeah. really damn good at shooting. So it's one of those things that make the Tau generally rather hated and a lot of different reasons uh, for that, uh, both from style and such. But this is actually one of the things I wanted to end this video with. Okay. Is that the Tau, while they have their issues, you should not be discouraged from playing them. I'll make plenty of Tau weeaboo jokes. Of course I will. But it's Oh, not really I, I, I get it now why he's in the, in the skirt now. I get it why now. Okay, I, I see. I see. Anyone who me a second. doesn't want you to play a faction is an idiot and you shouldn't be giving them the time of day. You pick what you think is cool and what mm -hmm. you like. In Warhammer, especially now, factions get better and they get worse. They grow and then they fall. 
you should only <laughs> that's be interesting that added the towel in here and you like look oh. you like the model oh, wait if you're talking tabletop that is what you should be going for every time is what you think is badass because things change all the time <laughs> definitely going with the orcs the if i do if i ever do tabletop so much warhammer definitely going with the orcs has something interesting every character has a story and there's a million stories to be told the universe is vast and except for the tyranny i don't think there's too many stories you can tell with them that is the damn charm and out of everything I've told you in these two videos, if there's anything that you could take away is the reason why so many of us are so into this series. I, I can why definitely see why. So I see much. why. It's a because lot. With so much variety, such an expansive universe, and so much that can be done, you can find yourself having a pretty great time. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it has been informative to you. Yes. You oh, like dear God. Has this been helpful? Rookie, we have twitch.tv slash twitch.tv you have my merchandise site in which I was wearing all of my merch, but underneath this because I had to wear this so it wasn't black or white for the green screen, which is a little unfortunate, but it's <laughs> fine. If you'd like to see merch, it is in the description. Also, if you'd like to support me on my Patreon page at Patreon slash Ricky for more videos like this, then that would also be I think be it was four years ago he made this video. Merch Patreon, anything if you want the support, that would be fantastic. I'd appreciate it. If not, I'm just stoked you got all the way to the end of the video, and that is enough for me. So, uh, it's really been 58 minutes. Like wow, future. time went by so fast. I did not know that. Long and uh, being with me through this pretty rough time, uh, that's oh, my fault. I mean, to pause it. I got also before I go, let me leave you with my favorite Warhammer quote. Uh, quote time who scoffs at the power of the last gun has never ran through a field of a thousand. <laughs> what is the last gun? All right. Bye -bye. Mm, goodbye, Bricky. Thank you for the great video, the great lore. Um, I have learned a lot. I know which factions I like, which factions I do not like. A certain faction that should be purged from the world. Um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I think someone in the comments too also mentioned there was a new faction added too as well. Oh, the Russian Bachelor Warhammer video? Oh. I don't think I ever watched that. I think humanity might be boned. I don't think we're we're beating them. And if the orcs ever decided to work together, like all of them decided to work together and unite as one and fight against the other races, I think they might be in for a rude awakening because the orcs have a lot of people. All right, I see you put some chapters down here. So I'm gonna see if I can remember what each faction does in this video. I might mess some stuff up. I'll try my best. All right, we got the Chaos Demons, which was just the four Chaos Demons, Corn. Zin Zinch, 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 Nurgle, and Slanesh. I know about them. Corn, blood, blood for the blood god. Uh, Zinch over here mippling with time and fate. Not time and fate, but you know, he's like the smart ones over here about fate, planet stuff. Nurgle, uh, poison disease. And Slanesh, pleasure, not pleasure, you know, pleasure, uh, lust, all that extra stuff. Then you got the chaos, the stars. Oh, that's just the chaos um, space marines that were part of the Horus heresy, I think, the nine traitors factions. Now the nine traders part marks, yeah, that's them. I forgot some standouts. What were some standouts from that? Oh no, the I remember one of the standouts. He mentioned them, but the one that stood out the most was the Angus Angar Angar, the one where they they took out pieces of their brain that made themselves more angry. That's wild. That's wild to me. And next you got the oh gosh, the Crawford Eldar. All right, so the Crawford Eldar were the uh, the Eldars or Eldarians that saw how like their species or race was like getting more depraved and like more like evil and said all right it's time to book it and so they left they made these uh spaceships that can house like millions of people they're trying to go back to the old eldar ways that's them but i think also in the same um section is when we got to see the worst evilest faction in warhammer history the dark eldars which let me see if i remember their, like, let me make sure i get their names right Drukari. Drew Kari, that's what they're called. The Dark Eldars of Drew Kari. Um, yeah, those were the worst. Uh, ha. I'm not gonna talk about everything they did, but they just love to inflict pain in order to like make sure Sinesh doesn't come and attack them. They like to inflict a lot of pain and various other things. And we're gonna leave it right there because we, we all know what happened. We saw the video. We, we all saw the video together. We know what happens with them. Let's not talk about them anymore. Next up, we got the Harlequins. They're just, they're clowns, they're clowns. Let's just keep it going. <laughs> and we got the Tyranax, the bug people that just love to eat. They're really simple. They just eat and eat. And there's a lot of them. They just eat more. Next up, we got the Gen Stealer Colts, which are part of Tyranaz. They, um, I forgot exactly what they do, but I think they, uh, convert people to worship, like, their god, their hive god, I think. It's weird. I might have to go back to that. But next up, we got the Orcs, probably the best 
faction out of this entire lineup right here. They just they just like to have fun, you know. They just fighting. Simple to do, you know, cause cause chaos, fight each other, uh, use the power of imagination, which is the strongest power ever. If it oh it don't work, sure it works. And then it just works, the machine. Great, they're great, they're great. And then we got the Necrons, you know about them. I remember watching them in the uh, the first ever Warhammer video I did. No, not the first, the second video I did, which was I think a recap, the timeline, yeah. They're undead skeletons basically, here to reclaim their place into the universe because they just got um, brought back. They just uh, revived, not revived, but they're out of their like their, their tomb because of the Dingleberry from the Adeptus Mechanicus faction. I didn't think I ever had to say that. They decided to mess with the with the stuff on their planet, I think, and now they're back here. And then we have the Tau Empire, which looks like it does not belong in this universe, but we shall see how what goes on later. Uh, Gundam, big robots, uh, nothing really dark going on in there, so they don't fit here. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all the factions so far. Well, around three years ago, and I gotta say, let me just get this off of here. I don't want to see this, uh, this dark Eldar's. Let me just go to the time part. Here we go. Let's go to some, some sort of positive. No, no, let's not go there. We're going to the works. Yeah, there we go. That looks better. That looks better. But yeah, this was a fun, fun video. I uh, did not know an hour has already went by, probably even longer when I checked the recording. Did not know that I was having quite a bit of fun watching this, learning new stuff until a certain faction came up. But afterwards, I had got more <laughs> uh, more fun in watching this. Brick everybody, Bricky always makes his videos engaging because I used to watch his uh, gaming reviews or gaming stuff, and it was great to watch. I do know that we're gonna check out a Space Marine video soon. I gotta figure out which one I wanna check out because it's like a couple you guys requested, or a few you guys requested. I'll look into that later. Um, but no, this was a lot of fun. Now I realize I never did get to eat my honey bun. Um, this is the second time I watched a Warhammer video. <laughs> the honey bun has not been eaten. I was just too invested into it. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even reach over for it. I was just that invested into the story. Even though the orcs are funny, I still think I'm an Abductus Mechanicus. I think that's the right, the Omniscient gods. Ah, I think I'm I'm still with them. I still like them, even though I don't want to like replace my body parts. But I still like them. I think they're still my favorite faction. But yeah, comment down below because I'm curious which factions you guys like. I swear, I better not see no one like the Dark Eldars, the Drew Carries. I forgot what they're called. I better not see that down there. Yeah, I better not. <laughs> but yeah, hope you enjoyed my reaction and thank you for watching. My cup of tea is out of here. Um, this is everybody. Man, we did it, guys. We did it. I I have learned a lot. I am I am more knowledgeable. I'm just still stuck about the Eldars still. The Dark Eldars, that still bothers me. The whole the whole, I, nah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore.